Is it worth it to get a 4K webcam today as a gaming content creator or live streamer? My typical answer to this question would have been no. It's too expensive, usually around the $250 to $300 price range. And then as a gamer, we're always shrinking in our webcam anyways to be over our gameplay. So all of that amazing 4K quality you're expecting to showcase on your stream is really getting missed. But just maybe my opinion will change with the release of the Insta360 Link 2 and 2C webcams. Both of these webcams offer a 4K 30 FPS resolution, a one over two inch sensor, which is really good for a webcam. They have fast autofocus and AI features such as auto tracking, framing, and even AI noise cancellation. All of which, of course, we're gonna test out here. With the webcams now out of the box, you're gonna see that each of these webcams attach to a tripod screen mount via a magnet. The magnet is pretty strong too, and it has a little clip on the bottom of it. So if you wanna get a nice clean overhead shot, you can do it. Now the major difference between the Insta360 Link 2 and 2C is that the 2 is on a two axis gimbal, which gives you a lot more movement and tracking capabilities than you would get with the 2C, which is just stationary here. With the feature that different between these webcams, you're gonna be able to pick up the Insta360 Link 2 for $200 and the Insta360 Link 2C for $150. So you're looking at a $50 price difference. All the other features are practically identical between these webcams, even from a software perspective, which we will get into in just a moment. But I know the big thing you guys care about is the image quality. What you guys are seeing now is the Insta360 Link 2C in 4K 30 resolution. What do you guys think of the quality? When testing out their focus abilities, we can see that it works pretty well, maintaining focus and sharpness on the primary object in front of us which is Roku, Baby Yoda. Now, if we compare these webcams against the Elgato Facecam Pro, which retails for $300, we can see that this webcam has a much wider field of view, taking in much more of my room compared to the Insta360 Link 2. I would say that this can be a slight benefit as you have more image space to work with, but I will say based on the comparison we're looking at right here, the Insta360 seems to handle the low lighting situations better by maintaining a more balanced level of brightness as well as sharpness over the Facecam Pro. Which one do you guys think looks the best? Let me know in the comment section below. Right now you're hearing a test of the webcam's microphone quality. What do you guys think of it? The big thing that this webcam boasts is its AI noise cancellation capability. So is it any good? Well, I have this big Dyson fan next to me. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna crank the fan to see how well this microphone actually cancels out the audio. Can you guys just hear my voice? Do you hear a lot of the fan? I'm also gonna record the audio on my MacBook Pro microphone. Can you guys hear the fan? running loud next to me. How does it compare to the Insta360 Link 2? I honestly could not hear the fan during the parts I was not speaking, and when I was speaking, I only slightly heard it. So I would have to say that the AI noise canceling feature passes the test. Now, Insta360 decided to give their old software a bit of a revamp. So if you are familiar with what that looked like before, this is a little bit different and honestly i think it looks a little bit cleaner so at the bottom this is where you can enable your preview we're gonna turn that bad boy on so that i can see myself right there to the right of that you're gonna get your resolution settings so if you click this you'll be able to switch it to 4k 30 if you like keep it at 1080p 30 or even 720p 30. i'm all about that 4k resolution so we're gonna go with that down over here you have your auto framing whiteboard smart whiteboard and desk view features for you gamers out there the desk view is going to be really cool to use as you can use that as like a keyboard cam so we can set it up kind of like that you know then we game do our thing or if we don't want to use a keyboard we can use a controller like so and we can use that very mindful very demure feature insta360 if we go over to the right side here we have our view section this is where we can adjust the positioning of the webcam if we want to set particular positions like maybe i want to go right side here i can actually set a preset just by selecting this plus button now i also have some other presets here and you can easily switch between these different positions which is very handy 
Below that, you have tracking settings for your head, half body, and whole body, especially if you're moving around in your scene. If we jump to the effects tab, this is where you can adjust the exposure, temperature, brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, anything related to how your image looks. If you don't want it to be on auto, for example, you can change it here. There's also a cool HDR feature, which this typically is useful if you're sitting behind, let's say a bright sun or something like that to where it's just totally blasted out and you need some balance in your image. Image. One of the other cool sections that I liked that Insta360 added into this control software was the background options. So you can add a blur effect if you want your whole background to be obscured so no one knows what's back there. But if we do switch to 1080p 30, we have the option to use a more natural bokeh background and we can adjust the intensity of that by just adjusting this dial to make it less blurry or more blurry like this. So you don't need to have an expensive lens camera setup in order to get that kind of nice, cool blur effect. It will be in 1080p 30, but that's okay because if you're shrinking down your webcam over your gameplay, no one's gonna see that quality loss and it'll still look cool. Also in this background section, you have the ability to switch out your background. There are some pre-made images that Insta360 put in here, but you can also add your own just by selecting this plus button here and you can use the file explorer to add in your own images like I did right here. I had my logo, pretty dope. Below that, you have some filters you can play around with, make your face pop a little bit more in case the settings up here didn't do the job. If you jump to the more tab, this is where you're gonna see those gesture controls enabled for auto framing, whiteboard and zoom. If at any point you wanna record or take screenshots out of this software, you can simply do that by going to the right side here and selecting the screenshot option or the record option and those will save directly to your computer. If you need to add this camera to other video or streaming applications such as OBS Studio, you'll first need to disable the preview in the software. Then if you go back to OBS, you can add a video capture device source, select the device drop down, and then choose the Insta360 Link webcam for your regular image. Now, if you wanna get those blur effects and background removal features as a part of your webcam image, you'll want to choose the Insta360 virtual camera to make those work. So what's the consensus with these two webcams? Well, I think that they're pretty solid. Picture does look pretty sharp. Of course, it doesn't compare to a real camera lens setup, but you're also not dropping 1000 plus dollars on these cameras. For me personally, I think the Insta360 Link 2C gives you the most value for your money. You get that great image quality resolution that I just mentioned on top of the AI features in the software. but. I don't think the gimbal is worth spending that extra money for. Like, think about it. How much more often do you think you're gonna be using those gimbal features versus just putting the stationary webcam up and just playing your game or recording yourself? So overall, well done Insta360 for making good quality 4K webcams that people can actually afford now without breaking the bank. We should, as content creators, want to record in higher resolutions to kind of future-proof ourselves because 1080p, yeah, it is the standard standard technically, but a lot of people are moving to 4K, so this is a good way to get your foot into it. Shout out to Insta360 Link for sending me these webcams to test for this video. They did not sponsor or control what I said in this video. These are all my thoughts and opinions and experience with using these webcams. Of course, if you guys are interested in picking up these webcams, you guys can use my affiliate link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for staying to the end. Hit it with a big thumbs up, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. But I know you get. Whoa! I dropped the webcam on my keyboard. Everything is fine.